Welcome to the second largest continent in the world and the cradle of mankind, Africa. Many myths surround the landscapes under the hot sun and the people who wrestle the smallest parcels of inhabitable land from the desert sands and the impenetrable jungle. Africa, with its elephants, camels, lions, and gorillas who inhabit the dark rainforests, hot deserts, and vast savannas. But the continent is more than just its unique wildlife. Dust, hot, and sunny, these are the associations with the name Africa. All these terms refer to the north of the country, which is dominated by a single immense and boundless desert. As hostile the desert may seem at first glance, one may be very surprised with a second one. And while the tropical rainforests along the equator may seem like paradise on Earth with their temperatures and rich rainfalls, the jungle bears perils that are as deadly as the heat of the desert. This apparent contradiction between forest and desert, rain and dust, life and death, describes Africa like no other part of the world and can be repeatedly found throughout the continent. Amid this turbulent and dangerous landscape, the first ancestor of man once descended from a tree, creating the cornerstone for the triumphal march of mankind. Let us explore the history of this unique corner of the earth and discover some of the most wonderful places in the world. covered by many different climate zones, which encourage specialized plant and animal kingdoms on each continent. Once, gigantic deciduous forests covered almost the whole extent of Europe. This temperate forest is only replaced along the Mediterranean coast due to the drier and warmer Mediterranean climate. Eastward, the Asian steppe opens wide, penetrating far into the largest continent of the world. North of the steppe, boreal forests dominate the landscapes of Siberia and the Far East. In the southern regions of Asia, however, particularly in the Middle East, more and more desert and savanna-like landscapes are common. In Southeast Asia, rainforests stretch to the islands of Indonesia. In the heartland of sunny Australia, a desert is surrounded by a variety of savannas, steppes, and rainforests. The New World, consisting of North, Central, and South America, is covered by a large number of different climates. The North is characterized by tundra and coniferous forests while the center of the North American continent is dominated by large plains, temperate landscapes, and some desert regions. In South America, vast expanses of rainforest form along the Amazon, while the often harsh climatic conditions of the Andean mountains serve as an extreme contrast. 
At the center of all these continents and climate zones is Africa. Deserts cover the entire northern and southern parts of the west coast, while at the center is the African jungle. Rainforest and desert are separated by broad belts of savanna with different gradations of climate. While at first glance, Africa might seem grim and less interesting than other continents, it is in fact the most unique continent on our planet. What makes Africa so special? The most prominent features of Africa are the gigantic animal herds, which travel great distances in search of food. However, it's not only the large number of the individual animals, but also the large number of different types of flora and fauna that make the continent stand out. In addition to the unparalleled biodiversity of Africa, its legacy as the cradle of humanity gives it a unique heritage. Over millennia, the various cultures of the once young species have evolved quite differently so that many different ways of life come together in Africa. But despite the long period in which mankind has inhabited Africa, the continent still holds many secrets in its innermost depths. Vast and endless, under the scorching sun, lie the deserts of Africa. To the north stretches the Sahara, the largest dry desert of the earth, virtually stretching over the entire area of North Africa. Its dunes and valleys are the stuff of many legends and tales. Once the home of countless kingdoms and crisscrossed by the salt caravans of the Tuareg, it is now an almost deserted place. Far to the south is the Namib, one of the rare fog deserts. It covers large parts of Namibia and Angola and has an area of nearly 100,000 square kilometers. The Namib is one of the driest deserts on Earth and is characterized by, among other things, extremely high and colorful dunes. At the core of the Kalahari Basin is the Kalahari Desert, which stands out from the other deserts due to its red sandstone. With nearly 900,000 square kilometers, it extends over many African countries. The entire Kalahari Basin, which is covered at the edges with dry savanna, is even larger. No matter where a desert is located, it's human instinct to view it as a lifeless place. But deserts are more than just big, dead sandboxes. Majestically, the summits of some isolated mountains rise far above the dunes of the desert. The distinctive ridges of mountains to the uniform and smooth texture of the desert From the far reaches of the Sea of Sand, mountain peaks jut out like lonely islands. Many of these individual outcroppings are petrified sand dunes, which can form high plateaus. Other solitary mountains are often volcanic in origin. However, entire mountain ranges can be the witnesses to violent tectonic activity. Impressive examples of such activity include the Ahagar Mountains and the Tibesti, which is the highest mountain range in the Sahara. At the northwestern edge of the Sahara extend the Atlas Mountains. This mountain range forms a natural boundary between the hot desert and the Mediterranean climate of northern Morocco. Unusual for mountains lying in or on the edge of a desert, the mountains of the Atlas contain metals and raw materials such as iron and silver, as well as natural gas.
Jarrett, Tannery, or simply Great Desert. These are the names of the largest dry desert in the world, the Sahara. The Sahara covers nine million square kilometers with its sand, gravel, and boulders. A region so dry and hot that all living creatures yield to the relentless emptiness. Or at least, so it seems. The desert can be more than just sand and dust. In some places, every now and then, a river cuts through the inhospitable wasteland. But it is only slightly visible in the shimmering heat, and soon all traces are lost again in the endless sea of sand. Away from the water, the eternal expanses of sand dominate, but the idea of the Sahara consisting only of endless sandy dunes is incorrect. Actually, only one-fifth of the deserts are real sand deserts. These are commonly called erg, or Edean, and consist mainly of quartz, which has been eroded by the wind from larger rocks and stones. The rock formations created by the erosion not only have many different forms, but, in some cases, seem very curious indeed. On the west coast is the Namib, one of the few fog deserts of the world. The cold Bangala current off the coast has been the cause for the decade-long lack of precipitation in the Namib. The Namib Desert existed almost 80 million years ago on Gondwana, the original continent. At that time, it was not located on the coast this occurred only after the continental drift. High, rugged mountains dominate the landscape at the edges of the Namib. The origin of the gravel-like rock formations has an interesting reason. The huge temperature differences between the red-hot days and the freezing cold nights lead the large rocks and boulders to explode into smaller pieces. We return from the foggy desert of the Namib back to the Sahara. Here, the wind-polished rocks and lonely high dunes are awaiting us again. The desert, close to the few mountains that rise out of the sand, is particularly dry. However, it is not true that the Sahara has always been a hot and sandy place. Within the last 100,000 years, there have been some periods when the Sahara was a green savanna. The last of these wet or pluvial times was about 8,000 years ago. During this time, hunter-gatherers migrated into the region, settled down, and for some time even turned to agriculture before the Sahara again turned back into desert. Desertification may have a large number of causes. The end of a cool and humid period thousands of years ago was the reason the Sahara could recapture the land from the savanna. Other factors may have also included increased erosion or salinization. But even if sand dominates today, signs of life still run through the heat of the desert. Oases are some of the most beautiful phenomena in nature to behold. The fact that water can spring out of the ground in the desert is both intriguing and puzzling. Oases can occur in many ways. Often they are created by rainwater that falls on the mountains and percolates through the soil. When the water hits a watertight layer, it flows along underground until somewhere in the desert it once again sees the light of day. Indeed, there are many more types of oases. For example, the groundwater is tapped. The most famous oasis in the world 
is probably the Nile, a river oasis. The sheer variety and beauty unveiled by this river defies description. Aside from the few spots with an oasis, only the barren and arid landscapes of the desert prevail. The sunset makes the top of the mountains glow red, and only with the evening are temperatures bearable again. Our journey now turns to a place that is not necessarily cool, but blessed with more water, the rainforest. In the heart of Africa, they lie, the evergreen rainforests. Every animal unique, every plant incomparable, every meter a new world. The tropical rainforests of Africa stretch over an enormous area. The huge coastal rainforest stretches along the west coast over Gabon and Cameroon to Nigeria. The heart of the impenetrable forests, however, lies in the center of Africa. After the Amazon basin, the Congo basin is the second largest rainforest in the world. The forest is not only fed by the daily heavy rains, but also by small and large rivers like the Congo. On the island of Madagascar, there is another rainforest, which is populated by many endemic species, that is, ones that only exist there. The rich variety of species is by far the most distinguishing feature of the rainforests of Africa. Numerous animal species are found in the depth of the jungle. The diversity of the forests can hardly be put into words and is completely unprecedented. Even today, with modern equipment and research tools, far from all of the species in the rainforests have been discovered. The tropics. Gnarled acacia meet the imposing and towering baobab trees with their characteristically thick stems. Even if, in the minds of people, Africa seems to consist entirely of desert, the continent is actually covered over and again with dense forests. As much as 75% of Africa lies in the tropical zone. Along the east coast to central Africa lays a vast area of the richest habitats for species on Earth. In the areas around rainforests, mountains and plateaus often rise above the landscape in front of the jungles. The weather determines the forms of life on the slopes and ledges of the mountains. On the warm and sunny sides, trees and grasses grow at the lower altitudes of the mountains, while less and less vegetation is found further on towards the summit. Areas of vegetation spread themselves out at the feet of the mountains. These form the transition between the rugged mountain regions and the humid rainforests of Africa. Located near the equator, the tropics are ruled by a daily rhythm that almost never changes within the year. Starting with the temperatures, which might sink noticeably at night, but over the year remain more or less the same to the daily downpour of rain. The sun usually shines almost exactly 12 hours, and the twilights last no longer than a half hour. Following the rapid sunrises, the trees and the ground heat quickly, causing large amounts of water to evaporate in a short period. Throughout the day, large towering clouds form, which spread above the entire rainforest. Around midday, there are abundant rains, which are often accompanied by thunderstorms. 
Several hours later, the rains finally subside, allowing night to descend upon the jungle, with the next day repeating the same performance. There are no seasons to change this rhythm of the beat. This is due to the proximity of the rainforests to the equator, meaning no change of season is actually possible. Even if the regular rains and the fixed daily routine initially appear monotonous, the rainfall has led to a green world whose diversity of species is incomparable. At first glance, these tropical forests, despite or perhaps because of the pouring rain, appear to be a paradise-like fertile place. But the rainforests are not fertile. The continuous rainfall has removed much of the nutrients from the earth, as if by a thorough rinsing. It so happens that all nutrients originate from leaves, plants, or animals that have recently died. The reason for the vast number of various and different species lies in the architecture of the rainforest's layered construction. On each of these layers, or floors, each located at a different height, various species have found a niche for survival. Since the conditions in the layers change with the environmental conditions of the different parts of the forest, although rainforests no longer represent even 7% of the Earth's surface now, they are home to between 40 to 70% of all living species due to their layered construction. Already, a few hundred meters in the rainforest can bring with them radical changes in the plant and animal species. Several hundred kilometers accordingly brings entirely new worlds. Such a new world with its mysteries and wonders lies ahead of us. Madagascar, the hallmarks of this island are forests, cliffs, and especially the lemurs. Lemurs are almost exclusively arboreal or tree-dwelling, so it is not surprising that the various species have either settled in the rainforests in the east, the thorny forests in the southwest, or the deciduous forests in the west of the island. Only a few species, such as the ring-tailed lemur, move frequently on the ground and in the open savanna. It is still not fully understood exactly how lemurs came to the island of Madagascar. There is no question that these unique creatures tremendously enrich the wildlife of Africa. The lemurs have been divided on the sixth continent, as Madagascar is often referred to, in about 100 different species. Even though this diversity of lemurs is demonstrated through many individual characteristics, some traits are the same for many of the species. Unlike many other types of primates, lemurs rarely display so-called sexual dimorphism. Significant differences or physical characteristics between males and females. In most cases, both sexes weigh the same, and the canine teeth have the same size, which clearly sets them apart from many other primates, such as chimpanzees. The name lemur probably comes from the Latin word lemures, a term for Roman spirits of the dead. The reasons for this name are the typical characteristics of most lemurs. They are nocturnal, have large eyes, and have distinctive faces. Although most of the lemurs are nocturnal, there are also species that limit their activity to the day. In most cases, it can be said that the small and light species prefer the cover of darkness and are therefore active at night, while the larger and heavier lemurs confine themselves to the day. However, there are a few species that have a so-called K 
cathemeral rhythm, which means that they do not have a fixed day and night cycle, as with exclusively nocturnal or day active animals. The commitment to a particular time of day or night is dependent on the weather, food supply, or the season. Also, this characteristic is unknown in other primates. The lemurs are able to communicate with their fellow species in several ways. They have a very good sense of smell and many scent glands all over the body. They have, therefore, developed a complex communication system that relies primarily on odors. They can also protect themselves against or call attention to predators with different sounds. The lemurs, however, possess even more peculiarities. Depending on diet specialization, for example, they may have an enlarged appendix which facilitates the digestion of plants or have an extra long tongue, enabling them better access to nectar. In addition to the lemurs of Madagascar, there are still more fascinating creatures to marvel at in the rainforests of Africa. Especially on the banks of the mighty rivers, an immense biodiversity has established itself. The light-filled embankments differ themselves from the thickets of the forests, not only in appearance, but especially in the species present. This snail takes a pause from the heat in the shady and humid regions of the rainforest. Not far away, however, lurks its hunter. With more than 100 kinds, the chameleon is one of the most diverse species in the tropics. Chameleons are famous for their ability to change color. The lizards not only change their pigmentation when danger threatens, but also to protect themselves from harsh ultraviolet rays or to mitigate the scorching blaze of the sun. Although snakes have spread over the entire world throughout evolution, they are by far the most numerous here in the tropics. Many species of snakes have a similar thermal imaging type of vision which enables them to hunt well in the dark. Having spied their prey, they stalk slowly, using their extremely powerful muscles for the approach. It is rare for the bite of a snake to be toxic. Very few of the nearly 3,000 species are dangerous to humans. This little turtle eats the plants near the bank. Its hard armor protects it from predators. As such unassuming creatures, it is hard to believe that some turtles can grow up to eight feet long. In addition to the turtles, there are other inconspicuous, however colorful, animals in the jungle, such as certain species of spiders. Butterflies also bring lively colors to this green world. Butterflies gather to feed on the flowers of plants. In a few weeks, the mating dances will take place and transform the shrubs and flowering plants to a place of a thousand beating wings. Slowly and majestically, the sun sets over the gentle waves of the Atlantic Ocean and wraps the edge of the impenetrable and mysterious jungle in darkness.
Our journey now takes us away from the tropics and towards the vast plains of Africa, the savannas. The savannas, the border areas between extreme precipitations have a wide variety of vegetation, depending on the available amount of water. The wide belt of savannas stretches from the Sahel in the north over the East African savannas, like the Serengeti, to South Africa with its so-called veld. The most arid savanna types are the thornbush savannas, usually located directly adjacent to deserts, where almost exclusively low and bushy plants are found. The dry savannas further on towards the equator produce greener landscapes with the help of some rivers and more rain. Especially green are the riparian forests, which spread along the banks with their cooler temperatures and more hospitable environments. The humid savannas, which can be recognized by their almost exclusively green landscapes, are located close to tropical rainforests. Due to the large food supply, humid savannas are also frequently the scenes of spectacular migrations of zebra and wildebeest. The lush meadows and swaying grasses of the savannas are like a small taste of paradise. Far and wide, the green plains of the African landscape stretch onto the horizon under the warm sun. The savannas of Africa, on land and in the air, a fantastic interplay of nature. The rivers and streams that run through the savanna are the basis for the biodiversity, but the cool water does not flow all year long through the sunny spaces. The savannas are subjected to a never-ending cycle of rainy and dry seasons. In the rainy season, there is an extreme amount of rainfall, turning the land green and causing the rivers to swell and flood their banks. The savanna is most fertile during this time, but also the rainy season must finally come to an end. In the dry season, the water supplies slowly but surely start diminishing. Humans and animals move to other, more humid regions as the rivers continue to dry up. Savannas are a distinctive feature of the African landscape. They cut broad swathes between the jungles in the heartland of Africa and the vast deserts along both the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. With meter-high elephant grass and broad roofs of acacia leaves, the savannas of Africa are a food source for a large variety of animals. In one of the rivers of a savanna, a few crocodiles have laid in wait. To satisfy their hunger, they have no fear of even the largest prey. Because of the constant threat posed by these carnivorous lizards, the rivers are largely abandoned. Only a few animals are safe from the crocodiles. Although hippos look ponderous and slow, they can very well defend themselves against predators like crocodiles. Besides these large animals, the savanna is home to countless species that one can easily overlook in the tall grass. The animals ensure their survival by living together in small groups. Together they find more food and warn each other of predators, and they're lurking everywhere. On the edge of this watering hole, a lioness refreshes herself with the cool water. 
Lions are the largest cats in Africa and the only great cat that lives together in packs. Their most striking feature is the large mane. This head of hair is not yet formed on the young animals. The darker and more magnificent the mane later becomes, the stronger the male will be. The cubs are raised not only by their own mother, but by all the lionesses. Unlike their relative, the house cat, concern for hygiene is rather limited amongst lions. Vultures are always grateful for a piece of carrion, but they rarely get to sample the next inhabitant. These young elephants are playing together in the shade of acacia trees. A few meters away, another calf practices defending the herd. Elephants need to drink a considerable number of liters of water a day to survive. If no watering hole is at hand, elephants will cross large spaces in search of water. Elephants can only release heat from the surface of their body and not by sweating. Therefore, they evolve large ears over time to supply the huge body. An elephant has to eat between 200 to 300 kilograms of food a day. Pachyderms prefer eating grasses, but fruit and leaves also find their way into the stomachs of these giants. Wildebeests are one of the largest species of antelope on the savanna. Their long migrations of hundreds of kilometers across Africa have made the wildebeest world famous. Every year at the end of the rainy season, the wildebeests cross rivers to reach fertile valleys. This results in herds that can comprise thousands of animals. Males and females often form separate herds. Outside the migration seasons, the males inhabit their own territories which they defend vigorously against intruders. Towards the end of the year, as the rainy season once again starts, the wildebeests make their return across the river. In some small tributaries of the rivers, the water is calm and numerous aquatic plants cover the surface of the stream. Large African buffalo often settle near bodies of water. But the waters don't only attract the heavyweights. Some antelopes are refreshing themselves on the banks of this river. Like many inhabitants of the savannas, the topis live in herds. Led by a male, they roam the savannas and cover great distances. While on their journey, the antelope search for juicy grasses and tasty herbs among the tall grass. Protected by their mother, the young warthogs pluck grass from the ground. Adult warthogs can defend themselves quite well with their huge tusks, even against big cats. such as the leopard. Normally, however, no prey escapes this stealthy hunter. The cheetah is also an excellent hunter. However, he can only maintain his incredible speed over short distances. Therefore, the cheetah observes its prey very carefully so as to avoid wasting any energy. In search of food, the tallest mammal on Earth overlooks the savanna, the giraffe. Even though they don't really look capable of putting up a fight, the giraffe has no fear of predators. Once it reaches a certain size, they are avoided by large carnivores such as lions and cheetahs. Besides their extremely long neck, 
the giraffe has other unusual attributes. For example, their notable pattern serves to release heat, so they are not reliant on shade in the sunny savanna. Not far from the grazing giraffes, we see some zebras. Zebras form groups of herds where they provide care for their young. The foal remains for about a year with its mother and feeds on her milk. The stripes appear to offer certain advantages. For example, the zebra is not perceived by the dangerous tsetse fly. Perhaps the complex pattern makes it difficult for predators like lions and cheetahs to distinguish individual animals when looking at a large herd before them. A group of female impalas graze before a bend in a river. Until the mating season, females discourage males with their uninviting horns. Their gracious appearance closely resembles that of the gazelle. In fact, they're among the more sturdy of antelopes. The antlers of the male are normally used only during the ritual fights of the mating season. As long as the female is alone, she dedicates herself to the rearing of her young. Over the ground of the grassy plains moves a solitary specimen of the world's largest running bird the ostrich. In most instances, ostriches, like gazelles, flee from their predators, whereby they can reach speeds of 70 kilometers per hour. The bulk of the day, however, is spent grazing and eating. The rhino is an extremely ancient animal. Already for 50 million years, rhinos walk the earth. Even though they possess an effective weapon with their horn, they are pure herbivores that graze the entire day through the savanna in search of food. The savanna is a wonderful land, full of life and diversity. But dangers lurk on all sides. The deserts are spreading the climate is getting warmer. Even the flaming bushfires seem to spread only devastation at first glance, but the fires are of inestimable value to the savannas, as long as they do not gain the upper hand. With the burning of grasses, shrubs, and sometimes trees, valuable nutrients are returned to the soil. Only with these new reserves can new plants grow to serve as food for the herds. Some plants have become so adapted to the regular and recurring fires that their seeds only open with the heat of the flames. As is so often in Africa, the end of one thing simultaneously creates a new beginning. Wide-spreading trees and shrubs provide both shade and are a source of food for animals. However, the plants are not as vulnerable as one often thinks. In fact, some of them have developed great ways to defend themselves against attackers such as giraffes and antelopes. The most notable type of defense is carried through chemical signals called phytohormones. Some plants, such as acacia, can actually warn each other about the approach of animals. Once they know of the presence of herbivores, the acacia begin to enrich their leaves with extremely bitter substances. The unpalatable taste repulses the animals, thus protecting the plant. For this reason, the trees in areas with many herbivores remain in close contact with their leafy canopies. Africa, a land of contrasts, with scorching heat, roaring rivers, 
and drenching rains. Like no other continent, it enchants its visitors with a unique blend of ever-changing landscape and abundant wildlife. Where once the species of man took its first step, today animals inhabit the sparkling rivers and golden plains. Even if history's stage has moved from Africa, it remains firmly anchored in the collective memory of the world. Less than the historical legacy, the earthiness and wildness of nature capture the imagination of modern society. The vast plains of the African savanna form a habitat of wild and natural beauty, eliciting an almost indescribable fascination through its very landscape and colorful diversity. The peace of the countryside and the animals spread out like a surging wave across the continent. The plains and savannas are, like the vast rainforests, home to the essence of life. Young animals of all kinds play and frolic under the African sun. Africa's landscapes lie quiet and peaceful under the same sky that looked down millions of years ago upon this land. The change in nature's realm is continuous, yet mostly inconspicuous. In the age of the digital revolution, the human eye is blind to the basic events of the world. Every square centimeter of Africa is filled with the rhythm of the wilderness, even in the silent desert dunes. The petrified sand formations and wind-polished rocks bear witness to the everyday wonders of Africa and the entire cosmos that is the African world. With the memories of the fantastic journey through the varied and exhilarating landscapes, we leave Africa to the setting of the blazing sun. Mm -hmm.